Hi, I'm John Burko, and I would like to present a brief overview on what I call the VDC principles. And these come from a lot of years of experience in applying virtual design and construction to many construction projects, large and small, in many industries. The value in applying these principles that I have found is that they enable better execution of the technology and best practices with VDC. And because of that, uh, they will result in better cost and schedule savings to the owner and more value in the overall utilization. So first I'd like to start with a brief definition of VDC and basically what it is, is it encompasses technologies and encompasses technologies and the people and practices involved in those technologies that facilitate more predictability in how the project will uh, unfold, how the planning and execution of the project will happen. Um, this is done in advance through these predictive tools and in the as-built or in the actual construction of the project, uh, VDC is used to validate the accuracy, reliability, and overall quality of the work that's done, which provides tremendous value to the owner in, in the manner of ensuring what we call certainty of outcome. So now I'd like to just quickly uh, review the four, what I have is four principles. Um, the first one uh, I refer to as flow of information. Um, so basically what this means is that data that's generated through models and, and technology, uh, building information models, for instance, and the technology used to work with those models needs to flow through the course of the project. It can't be isolated to say one phase of the project. And if, if that happens, you'll, you'll have limited value. The second principle is all about measurement and control. What that means is that the data needs to be traceable and, and easily controlled because if it is, then the data has better credibility and authenticity and will be trusted by all stakeholders, especially the owner. In addition to that, that by having this data in this in, in this uh, in this in this manner, um, it will be able to be used to generate metrics on performance improvements that result from uh, application of the technology, for instance, uh, schedule savings or or rework reduction and things like that that again add value um, to the owner. The third principle I refer to as impact on construction. This one may sound obvious, but what it's really about is, again, the, the point of using VDC technology is to enable better construction. So the work that's done in the technology space and the digital space with models and so forth needs to be beneficial to the construction process. If it's not, then its value is diminished. And the fourth and final principle is all about accessibility. And what that means is that the data should be democratized and, and easily accessed by all the stakeholders and consumers of the data, which means the owners should be able to, uh, to have access to the data, the subcontractors, design engineer, general contractor. This needs to be uh, a transparent process, again, to maximize the value of the data and the overall benefit of VDC to the project and to the owner. I'd like to show one example from actual projects for each of the principles. The first one, as I mentioned, is flow of information. And this example comes from an airport project. And what this example is showing is how during the course of the project, the 3D information or the BIM model is integrated with schedule data and cost data that are continuously updated through the course of the project, as well as the increasing detail of the design model so that the owner and all stakeholders can get a clear, concise, and visual update and understanding of, in this case, the financial health of the project. So it's flowing through the full life cycle of the project. The second example is about measurement and control. And for this one, um, I'd like to, uh, to uh, utilize an example that involves a pretty common technology from construction, the construction space, which is the use of 360 degree cameras to generate uh, updated photos that are uploaded to the web and integrated with the design model, the BIM model, so that at any given time during the course of construction, the as-built information can be compared in a measurable, ma in a measurable manner to the design information to ensure that the as-built 
is per design uh, with the sufficient accuracy and quality that's required. Um, this is a great technology, very practical, and a great example of, of uh, controlling the flow of information to ensure quality. The third example is about impact on construction. Um, and for this one, I'd like to show from a water treatment plant project, one of my favorite examples is uh, a use of many aspects of VDC for the purpose of ensuring safety and minimal risk in a complex construction operation. And this is what we call digital rehearsal. So what's going on is that you have the model of the project, which for the gray section is actually a laser scanned as-built model, which is combined with the design model, as well as construction equipment and other logistics and the schedule. All this is uh, combined together so that um, the construction team can practice in a virtual space the installation, in this case, of a large prefabricated assembly. And so when they actually do the work in the field, um, the work is done with less stress, it's done safely, and it reduces the construction time required to do the work. Great value to the owner, great example of VDC. And finally, I'd like to show the fourth, an example for the fourth principle, which it was about accessibility. This one is from another large airport project. And in this case, what's being done is that uh, during the course of the project, uh, multiple stakeholders are accessing the data from the same environment and they're using it for different purposes. So for the on-site construction work, they're combining this information with their uh, traditional approaches of say pole planning um, to ensure uh, good coordination amongst the trades. And from the standpoint of say, uh, people with a management role um, like project managers and uh, construction superintendents, they're able to use this information to review their scope in detail with all the scopes of the different disciplines so they can, they can ensure that the planning of the work is, is happening um, as expected. So it's a great example of accessing a lot of information in one environment um, to improve the performance out of the job site. So that's the end of uh, my overview. I hope you enjoyed uh, what I showed and, and got something out of it. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, you see my LinkedIn contact information in the corner of the screen.